This is Future Talk. Future Talk. Future Talk with Omnial Saleh and Hany Balkis. Welcome back to Future Talk right here on Pulse 95. It is me, Hannibal Al-Khlazi, with Omnia Saleh, bringing you everything you need to know about what's happening in the tech world and right here in the UAE. It is a beautiful day, ladies and gentlemen. It is Wednesday. One more day till the weekend. It's the 21st of October, <laughs> 2020. I'm very excited because I feel like this week was a little bit long. Omnia. It was. I feel like the weeks this, this month have been pretty long, but... To keep you entertained for today, we have lots and lots to share with you about what's happening in the tech world, starting with Facebook. Facebook is making headlines as it's working on a multilingual translation tool that is powered by artificial intelligence. Omni really likes this one because, you know, <laughs> she's a translation uh, master. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and we're going to be talking about Twitter, how it's temporarily changing the way you retweet. Now, Omni likes translation. I do like Twitter. So we're both really excited <laughs> to talk about these t- two stories, but we do have a special guest today, Omni, don't we? Yes, indeed. We're talking about autonomous shuttles hitting the univer- the roads of University City right here in Sharjah because students will now get a glimpse of what it's like to be in the future of automobiles. Joining us today will be Director of Sustainable Mobility with BIA and Project Manager at ION, Mr. Nasir Al Shamsi, who's going to be telling us all about the different features of those shuttles, when are they actually going to be uh, implemented fully since they did just finish a successful trial earlier uh, this month. So lots and lots is going to be in store on today's show. Keep all 95 locked. And we'll be right back. Daily digital news. Bits and bytes connect our world. Your quick roundup of everything that is happening in the tech world, in the UAE and around the world. Today we're talking all about Facebook making headlines because they're actually working on a multilingual translation tool that is powered by artificial intelligence. Now, we're living in a world where language is no longer a barrier. We've seen different platforms, different applications that have been helping all of us bridge the gaps when it comes to differences in culture as well as language. But this is by far the newest mm-hmm. AI language algorithm model that is currently being trained on 2,200 language pairs, which is almost 10 times more than the previous best models that rely only on English data. Now, Omnia, I really like this topic of discussion. I'll tell you why. Yeah. Because uh, I remember when I was 14 first came out, there was a translation mm. feature and I was showing yes. you that feature. Now, this put a lot of things into perspective. So let's say I'm going to go to a foreign country. Let's talk about Japan, for example. I don't mm. speak the Japanese language. All I have to do, and a lot of people, what they have to do now is say what they want to say on the translator and then show uh, someone, a local or anyone who speaks the language and you can get directions, know which good food places are are around are around the city. So it's just amazing how you couldn't do this 10 years ago. Now I'm ta- 10 no, years ago you, you couldn't do this. 15 years ago you couldn't do this. So seeing this, uh, this, this technology being developed and being used, and especially Facebook. Now, I do bash Facebook quite a lot. Though, yeah. But Facebook coming out and bringing out this, this, um, this new powered AI just really puts things into perspective. Let me tell you a little bit about translation as well. When it comes to translating to different languages, it's very easy to use the right text, you know, to translate it literally. But the issue with using machine translators yes. is that a lot of the times the context gets lost. Mm. So let's say we're talking about, you know, if I say Hani is strong as a lion, uh, as a lion, I'm if I were to translate it into another language, Arabic, Arabic works, but if any other language, it may not make sense to yeah. say Hani is lion. a lion. It might, might say lion is stronger than Hani. Exactly. Or for this certain language, lions may not be what's considered the strongest animal. You know, you know, Omnia, when you brought that topic up, it reminded me of the ancient Roman times mm. that a lot of battles used to happen because things would get lost in translation. The translator or the messenger, when they were going to give uh, this message to the king or whoever, the translation would, wouldn't be perfect or would be a loss. So instead of saying... It won't make sense. Instead of saying, you're doing a great job... Someone would say, you're doing a horrible job. Please, my king wants to meet you. <laughs> so things like that would happen. But we're in the 21st century, ladies and gentlemen. Mm. And uh, it's, it's, it's so advanced that it can do multiple languages at one time as well. Yes, indeed. And Facebook's new algorithm model can actually preserve the context and the meaning of the text that you are translating. So that means no longer are we missing out on the context mm. of the text. So currently, whenever we are uh, translating to different languages, there's always the issue of having 
training data available yes. for AI. But now with this model, we're looking at an open sourced uh, original source code. So these are freely available for any researcher who even wants to develop their very own AI. And it comes with 2,000 language pairs, which yeah. is 10 times more than the previous best models that were relying only on English language data to train these artificial intelligence. Now, Omnia, um, how many times have you read a book that, let's say, for initially mm. was in Spanish or in Arabic? Now, I've read a couple of books that were initially written in Arabic, mm. and I would get so lost in translation mm. because the translation wouldn't be perfect, and you would have to kind of mix and match things when reading this book. So I'm looking at this not only as a communication or barrier type of thing, True. obviously it's breaking barriers, but what, how we can use this for articles, for books, for, for uh, contacting one another, even emails. So having this type of technology not only uh, makes it easier for a person to contact one another person yeah. for storytelling, news articles, there's a lot that you can do. Now I want to ask the audience, 4215 Salat, have you guys ever read something that was translated to you and you're like, what does this mean? This makes no sense. 4215 Salat, but let's talk about Twitter and go to the Twitter universe and how it's temporarily changing how you retweet. Yes, indeed. Now we all know that the U.S. presidential election is just around the corner and these changes that are happening in Twitter will be in place until at least the end of election week. So Twitter is trying to fight misinformation in every way possible. But now it's also temporarily changing how we retweet to help prevent the spread of misinformation. So every time you want to retweet, you will get the option of adding some form of quote to your retweet. So that could mean adding that this article was not read. Mm. So you can go ahead and take it with a grain of salt. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, so Omnia, so what they're doing starting is that when you click or tap the retweet icon. Now, Omnia, I don't know how often you use Twitter. Mm. I'm a very, I'm, I'm big on Twitter. Not big on Twitter. <laughs> so, so Twitter will pull up the quote tweet uh, yeah. co uh, composer to encourage you to write something about that tweet before you share it. Now, you actually don't have to write anything on that tweet. You're you not can, forced to. You can quote it and tweet it. But by doing this and making it a little bit of a hassle to retweet, this does kind of uh, disencourage people to retweet anything they see, which is good. I'll tell you why, Omnia. Mm. Because it's easy to retweet something. So let's say you have a thousand followers, Omnia, mm. and you retweeted something is going to be retweeted to 1,000 people. And one person re-retweets re that. So and misinformation can be spread fast and quick, like wildfire. We, we've seen it hand on hand, how quick misinformation has been spread. So having this feature is very important and hats off to Twitter. And it's so funny. I'm, I'm going to make him talk about it. so funny how nowadays a U.S. presidential election relies on Twitter. I know. And the thing is, it's showing how important and how life changing social media platforms have been to all of us. They can change facts into uh, lies and they can at the same time turn lies into facts. So these changes to retweets are not all the only difference that you might see to your Twitter experience today because Twitter is also uh, going to stop showing the liked by or followed by recommendations from people that you do not follow. Mm. So the trends box will only show trends with additional context, which is what, we, what we've been seeing recently. So whenever there is a trending tweet, you will also see some form of background information about why this trend is happening. So just like the changes to retweets, these tweaks will be in place from today up until at least the end of the election week in the US. And I personally hope that it lasts even beyond that because mm. I don't think misinformation should be fought only because of the US presidential elections. Mm. We should always be trying to stop the spread of fake news. Yes, and uh, we kind of saw this firsthand when the article uh, feature did come up. If you retweet an article without actually click on the link, when reading you're gonna be, it, you're going to be prompted with, hey, you need to read this before you retweet it. Let us know you guys' thoughts. 4215 or on Instagram at Pulse95Radio. Let us know these changes to Twitter. Are they good or bad? And if they're bad, let us know why. We're going to be taking a short break. But when we come back, we have a very special guest coming on. Yes, indeed. This is Future Talk. Future Talk. Future Talk with Amiel Saleh and Hany Balkis.
Autonomous shuttles are coming to the world's largest educational district. We're talking all about the university city of Sharjah because recently a UAE-based sustainable and smart transportation company named ION just completed a successful pilot trial for its Navia autonomous or driverless shuttles at the university city of Sharjah. What are the features of those shuttles and also how were they tested? Joining us today is Mr. Nasir Al-Shamsi who's going to be giving us all the details on how these autonomous shuttles have been integrated. He is the Director of Sustainable Mobility with BIA and the Project Manager at ION. Thank you so much for joining us today, Mr. Nasser. Thank you. Thank you for having me. The pleasure is all ours. Welcome to the show. Now, let's kick start this conversation by asking you, can you tell us a little bit about the Navia autonomous shuttles? Um, okay. In, in a nutshell, um, uh, the Navia Autonomous Shuttle, I would uh, simplify it in a way, um, a robo vehicle. You know, let's, uh, let's keep it simple. It's, uh, it's like a walking or a driving mm-hmm. robot that you pre-program it in, uh, you know, in different locations uh, uh, without having, uh, let's say, a driver yeah. you know, to, to, uh, to actually drive uh, the shuttle. Um, to be more uh, specific, mm-hmm. uh, these are uh, autonomous uh, vehicles that have integrated uh, sensors that uh, look around uh, the shuttle at 360 de- degrees and uh, monitor the surroundings, uh, any obstacles uh, in order to uh, continue moving and not, not stopping. Mm-hmm. Mm. It, it quite literally sounds like bringing a fragment of the future to our present. But these driverless shuttles uh, just passed their trial test in the university city of Sharjah. Uh, what did this trial yeah. assess and how was it monitored? Okay, um, uh, well, we, we had many parameters we had to actually uh, look after mm-hmm. uh, before ensuring um, uh, the... Safe. Or the, 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 let's, uh, it's not about safety first. Mm. So we, uh, before up, uh, implementing such a technology in any, any uh, use case, you know, whether it's a university city or any, any other communities, mm. first of all, we, we look at, uh, let's say, the GPS coverage. Now these uh, these uh, 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 shuttles or these uh, or this type of technology relies heavily on GPS signals. Now, mm. if GPS signals are really low, we have to uh, add amplifiers, you know, to to increase the accuracy of the distance. Now uh, I'll just keep uh, give you an example. If you look at, uh, for example, you know, everyone uses uh, the location in WhatsApp, for example, mm. and. Um, when you share a location, normally the, it's, the accuracy is up to uh, four meters. But in this case, we cannot um, have that four meters as a, as a, as a, as a factor. So we mm. have to minimize it by adding additional um, uh, amplifiers mm. to uh, increase the accuracy to 0.1 centimeter for safety reasons, uh, for accuracy, uh, etc. Absolutely. Um, uh, uh, so um, we had to assess, first of all, the GPS uh, coverage. Mm-hmm. Uh, another thing is we wanted to expose uh, students to the next uh, generation uh, transportation solutions, you know, inspiring them. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, the results, uh, we, had, we had an onboard engineer that actually was measuring uh, the parameters, uh, you know, the, such as... Uh, the reliability, uh, safety, consistency of the uh, communication of the sensors with its surrounding. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, these uh, these uh, shuttles, they have, um, you know, a, a very, very high, uh, highly responsive LiDAR sensors, mm-hmm. which actually uh, communicates with the surrounding. It can tell uh, if this object, uh, w- you know, it, it's a moving object, it's a... Um, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a still object, mm-hmm. and based on it, it will adjust the speed. It will, ad- you know, it will apply braking, etc. Amazing. Uh, 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 just in a nutshell, you know, these uh, lidar sensors. Uh, for for people who don't know what these sensors are, these sensors, uh, they, you know, they they use infrared, uh, ultraviolet light to map out the environment around the vehicle. Uh, to help it, you know, direct uh, mm. uh, the motion and, you know, apply braking, etc. Mm. 
Now, now, how did the infrastructure of the university city support the operation of those autonomous vehicles, Nasr? Um, so, for uh, we we did we did actually a couple of tests. So, uh, test were, number one was very very successful, mm-hmm. very successful. I mean, we monitored the sensors, the sensors. Uh, you know, on on a, uh, on one of the on one of the tests, I was actually on board all the time. Uh, uh, on board one uh, of the these, shuttles. Mm. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Um, uh, checking the sensors, you know, the reliability. Can they communicate with the, you know, the pavements, with sidewalks, with the, um, uh, you know, the speed bumps, uh, roundabouts, etc. So, uh, and then, and then, so prior, prior actually to the test, mm-hmm. we had to do a map. So we had to map the complete route mm-hmm. of the shuttle. Uh, and then, and then, uh, it was a, a really a complex one because you know the moment you have roundabouts, you, the moment you have um, you know uh, gates, barriers, etc., that becomes more complex. So we, it requires like a 3D mapping uh, mm. software rather than a, two, a 2D one. And um, uh, initially, uh, after after we have done uh, the mapping of the university city, we um, we started with the first run. And it was very, very, very successful. In some locations, we saw a drop in in, in um, GPS signal, but that's not due uh, due to the you know uh, this, the, the area shuttle. of the mm-hmm. university or or the shuttle. It's mainly uh, because of uh, you know uh, buildings. So, yeah. for example, when when we were driving within the AUS, mm. uh, the American University of Georgia. So the moment it it uh, it started. Uh, uh, driving between the buildings, then that's where the signal actually dropped. But the the, the solution is there. Um, uh, uh, in amplifiers, install amplifiers, yeah. GPS amplifiers should 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 solve the the issue. Amazing. Th- that's great news to hear that autonomous shuttles are coming to the university in the different I, universities. I wish, right I wish it was around when I was uh, in university, but <laughs> <laughs> we're both uh, we know the university city inside out. Like the back point. of our hand, Omni. Quite Omni literally. And I. Okay. Okay. Uh, Coming up on Future Talk, we're going to be telling you all about the different features of Navia Autonomous Shuttles. What are their different uh, capabilities when it comes to 3D vision, their ability to recognize their environment. So if you have any questions for Mr. Nasir Ashamsi, make sure you send them in at 4215 Dorit or slide into our DMs on Instagram at Pulse95 Radio. Keep Pulse95 locked. We'll be right back. This is Future Talk. Future Talk. Future Talk with Omnia Saleh and Hany Balkis. To everyone who has been to the University City of Sharjah, I think it is quite clear how beautiful the infrastructure of it can be. But apart from how cool it is and how many universities it it actually houses, Mm -hmm. there is a new development that is going to be added to this beautiful part of Sharjah because autonomous shuttles are coming to that area and they will be helping students move around between different universities, but also experience a fragment of future automobiles. Joining us today is Mr. Nasir Ashamsi, Director of Sustainable Mobility with BIA and Project Manager at Ion, who's going to be giving us a little bit more uh, in depth uh, and an insight about what these shuttles will have to offer. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Mr. Nasir. Thank you. Thank you. Now, we know the features of the shuttles and the technology behind it are like 3D vision, environment recognition capabilities, automatic road navigation, motion sensors, and much more. But uh, how are these shuttles friendly with the people of determination? Um, okay. So um, maybe maybe uh, um, you haven't. Uh, if you will allow me, uh, yeah. there's one small missing feature about the the shuttle, which is I'm sure uh, it will amuse people. Mm. How how really smart these shuttles are. Mm. So there there's a there's a tech. Uh, it's called uh, we call them V two X modules. Yeah. Now when we say X X could mean anything mm. uh, in particular. So, uh, for example, um, uh, uh, these are modules that actually can communicate with the surroundings. So, for example, you have uh, stoplights. So, uh, what we normally do in a smart city, for example, we install IoT communication sensors, mm-hmm. uh, let's say, in a, in a, in a stoplight. And uh, the shuttle itself uh, can actually speak to the traffic light. Oh, so, wow. if a traffic light, uh, yes, if a traffic light says, I'm red, then the shuttle will automatically stop. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's 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 to that extent 
that can actually communicate with the surrounding. So we we have one, um, uh, I cannot uh, really identify the location, but we have done uh, a trial, which we'll be announcing very sh- uh, shortly the launch of the project. Mm-hmm. It's uh, in Abu Dhabi, where actually the shuttle c- communicates with barriers. That's wow. amazing. So there is, there, yeah, so there is like an, uh, an entry uh, barrier to a parking lot. Um, you know, we wanted to actually, you know, convert the whole uh, community into a smart city, sm- mm-hmm. a smart mini city. Mm-hmm. And we had to install these um, IoT sensors, V2X modules, and have them communicate. And we did the test, the trials. Um, it's, uh, it works flawlessly. That's mm-hmm. great to hear. Um, but can you tell us a little bit more about the features of the shuttle? So Hani mentioned a few, but we would like to go a bit in depth into what are the different features that they're going to be offering to students and how will they be interacting mm-hmm. with the roads that they are driving on? Uh, okay, so um, uh, going back, so these uh, shuttles, uh, mm-hmm. you know, they, they, they have these um, LiDAR sensors. Yeah. Now, uh, the, uh, the LiDAR sensor uh, uh, itself is not uh, enough to actually have the shuttle, um, uh, you know, move around. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we need to have these IoT sensors that, that talk to each other with the sensor. The, the shuttle itself has eight sensors, you know, two on each side, one in the front, one in the back, and two up uh, on top of the shuttle. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so uh, let's take a use case, for example, the, the perfect use case, which we did in the, the American University. Mm-hmm. When, when the shuttle arrived at the main gate or the main uh, entrance of the university, um, when we programmed uh, the route itself, um, the, the route itself had multiple, um, uh, we call them point of interest. Yeah. So the shuttle has to stop at those uh, point of interest. And in, spe- in specific ones, uh, where there is a, uh, a wheelchair uh, uh, ramp, mm. we had to program the, the shuttle itself as soon as it reaches that point of interest, it will dispatch the wheel, uh, wheelchair access. That's amazing. So, so it mean, can recognize on its own. Yeah, I mean, we have to pre-program it. It's yeah. not about recognizing it. Yeah, we have to pre-program it. So what we did, basically, let's say at the, at the roundabout, where the, the main entrance of the uh, AUS, mm-hmm. uh, there is a wheelchair, uh, wheelchair ramp. We automatically knew that we should have that um, um, wheelchair access uh, to be uh, to be you know to come out automatically, mm. assumingly that maybe someone you know would be, uh, uh, you know any anyone with the um, uh, accessibility mm-hmm. will have will will use that facility within uh, within the shuttle. Mm-hmm. Um, the shuttle itself has a capacity of carrying uh, up to fifteen, mm. uh, nine, uh, ten. 15 uh, students. Sorry, ten. yeah, fifteen, fifteen students. I would say fourteen, mm. fourteen, and one operator. So we yeah. we should have a safety operator all time within the shuttle, mm-hmm. just for you know uh, in case. He has to interfere, and it has a joystick similar to an Xbox mm. joystick. Okay. So it's like you know, actually playing a game, you know, <laughs> to that, uh, to that, uh, to that level. Yeah. Um, mm. So, and what we are doing, uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, the, the, this shuttle is part of a larger fleet. Mm. Uh, you know, we are proud to say that Ion uh, operates the largest fleet uh, of autonomous shuttles, at least in the re- uh, in the region. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, not uh, not the UAE, not the the Gulf. It's in the region. In the whole because, region. Because uh, yeah, and in Abu Dhabi, we already have three shuttles operating in Masdar City. Four are coming on the way. Um, so w- what we did, we ent- uh, we created an app. Um, uh, uh, it's an on-demand app yeah. that integrates. Uh, that actually communicates with the shuttle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, uh, for example, uh, let's say you are, uh, you know, I, I don't know, I don't know the, the 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 buildings of the AUS, but for example, let's say uh, the main building yeah. and the shuttle is way uh, is at the parking lot. Mm-hmm. And uh, yes, it has a pre-programmed route, but uh, a passenger can override it in mm-hmm. a way. Override it in a way will actually can call the shuttle to come and pick up. That passenger. Okay. If there is no, no nothing, nothing uh, pre-programmed, uh, etc. Okay, makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. And now, now I want to ask about when this shuttle is on the road. How is it going to interact with other drivers and other cars on the road? See, uh, right now we don't have any plans. 
to mm. actually deploy these shuttles on public roads mm. for one reason uh, the algorithm uh, is yet to be improved Mm. Yeah. So, uh, it's uh, right now it's under under testing. Yeah. So the maximum the 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 speed the shuttle can go is up to 25 kilometers. Mm-hmm. Um, we can push it further, but uh, there there is a high risk. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know we, we need we inter- we need to integrate a lot of programming, a lot of uh, you know the use cases. You know algorithm is basically scenarios scenarios. We have to keep on building scenarios. Feeding and it, it, it takes information. Time. Yeah. Hundred yes, percent. Yes. Uh, yeah. So it's not meant uh, at the moment. It's not meant for public roads. It can go easily as long as the authorities will allow us. Mm-hmm. Uh, the moment you have sensors around it, it's, I mean, I mean, um, uh, it's it's part of the infrastructure. So I mean, uh, if a vehicle, a vehicle will be considered as an obstacle yeah. mm. uh, to the to the shuttle. So it will either you know reduce the speed, increase the speed, you know, uh, uh, ov- overtake, etc. So it yeah. has the capability of dealing with any obstacles that uh, come yeah. up in its in yeah. its way. So yeah, this... it can overtake also. It can overtake. Oh, wow. It can turn the signal. So what happens? It will turn the signal on and it will overtake. Okay. Uh, so this yeah. was a test run of these autonomous shuttles. But when should we expect them to be deployed and implemented with students trying them out in the university city of Sharjah? What are the future plans uh, for them in that perspective? So the future plan right now is identifying uh, the right locations. Now, uh, this will be an ongoing uh, discussion because we don't want to put them on the public road of the university city. Yeah. We want to focus primarily on, let's say, for example, uh, AUS mm-hmm. uh, as an example. So one of the discussions that we had is that we have, uh, I know there's a, a good amount of uh, distance to be walked from the dorms to the, you know, to the AUS. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> I'm sure you guys have experienced it. So, um, so that was one of the use cases. Uh, another another use case was um, uh, park and ride. So picking up people from the parking, you know, uh, taking them all the way. Parking lots tend to be a bit. There's a bit of a distance between every parking lot and a main building uh, or a building with uh, classes. Exactly. So there is there there are a few use cases right now. Where it's in, in discussion, mm-hmm. and now we um, uh, in in uh, now we're we're trying to figure out a way where we can actually have the shuttle leave the AUS and go to different uh, universities, for example. You mm-hmm. know, if there, if there is, and uh, that would require approvals from you know the the, the police themselves yeah. uh, because you know the shuttle will be will be. Uh, driving at a, a low speed at uh, 25 kilometers so i mean we need to get their acceptance so uh, there are a few uh, administrative work need mm. to be done but in in principle we are ready to go and uh, very very soon you will uh, you know we will be announcing the the launch very exciting news happening right here in Sharjah. I'm ex- I'm excited, yeah. but I'm, I'm kind of a little bit jealous of the students that will be trying those out, and <laughs> I'm not and hey, because I did graduate. But we're going to be taking a short break, but when we come back? When we come back, we're talking all about the new on-demand ride-hailing service that is going to be featuring a lot of electrical vehicles coming right, of, right out of ION as well. Keep Pulse 95 locked. We'll be right back. This is Future Talk. Future Talk. Future Talk with Omnia Al-Saleh and Hany Balkis. Welcome back to Future Talk right here on Pulse 95. The topic of conversation today is all about autonomous vehicles and autonomous shuttles. And we have an interview with the Director of Sustainable Mobility with BIA and Project Manager at Ayan Nasr Shamsi. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Nasser, right before the break, we were talking all about the launch of the autonomous shuttles right here in the heart of Sharjah, more specifically in the university city. But ION has also uh, been collaborating with Sharjah's RTA to launch a new on-demand ride-hailing service with a fleet of electric vehicles. Can you tell us a little bit more about this collaboration and uh, how is it going to be available for residents right here in Sharjah and different Emirates? Um, uh, see, well, well, since inception, you know, we we uh, we started off with a fleet of Teslas mm-hmm. uh, operating under the Kareem uh, Kareem platform as mm-hmm. um, a Kareem electric category, and we saw uh, from there. Uh, I mean, for the past almost two years, we've crossed close to three million kilometers of clean. Uh, sustainable uh, driving. 
So mm-hmm. we actually almost uh, eliminated close to 1.5 tons of carbon wow. dioxide. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that that was only you know these are you know pilot projects you know uh, in Dubai in Abu Dhabi, and we wanted to extend it not only in Sharjah but you know all over um, the 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 MENA region. Mm-hmm. So we we saw we saw this opportunity, and when we approached Sharjah RTA, we told them you know uh, we have. We will. We are planning to launch our app. It will be purely dedicated to electric vehicles. It's fully integrated with with the um, multimodal. So what we call it, we call it a multimodal mm. uh, transportation system. So it actually integrates public transportation with um, a ride hailing app, a typical uh, ride hailing app. Mm-hmm. And uh, it took us some time, you know, uh, going through the app, uh, you know, uh, plugging in their. Um, uh, their regulations, their fees, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and we're planning really soon to launch uh, a soft launch, to have a soft launch, and it will be free of charge. Oh wow! For, uh, for, for a period of time <laughs> only. Um, um, uh, the fleet, I can tell you, what the fleet. They are turquoise uh, colored uh, Tesla Model S's. Mm-hmm. We're gonna have uh, Model 3s. We're gonna have all sorts of electric uh, vehicles on on uh, our platform. That's great to hear. Um, and another interesting aspect that uh, I'm not sure if it's correct or not is the gender equality that it's going to be bringing for women drivers as well. Can you tell us a little mm-hmm. bit about that? Yeah. So so what we uh, 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 you know. Um, uh, when we look at communities, when we look at the cities, for example, you have, you know, m- m- uh, men, women, you know, l- ladies, girls, boys, etc. And some of them have that that uh, that um, concern about taking yeah. a ride with with a with, you know with a with a, with a male driver. Yeah. And we looked at it from that angle. In addition, we looked at uh, you know having that diversification in our our. Uh, uh, um, team of drivers yeah so right now right now we have 40 percent of our uh, drivers are actually female drivers mm-hmm. that will cover <laughs> exactly <laughs> and 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 those uh, those women uh, primarily are focused on women mm. children ladies girls name it Mm-hmm. Amazing. I, I, I'm actually really excited to see you and I'm actually happy and proud to see that coming. And especially we do know that uh, gender equality is a big topic. And for you guys to tackle yeah. this, it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, so we're definitely very excited for all these brand new accomplishments that will be happening right here in Sharjah. Uh, when should we expect uh, or a timeline of the application and the ride hailing service to be ab- to be available right here in Sharjah? Um. Let's a rough time. I would say, I w- okay, I would say before the end of the year, uh, we will be having, uh, yeah, before the end of the year, we'll be having a soft launch mm-hmm. uh, for everyone to be uh, to be able to use the, the app. Inshallah. Great. So and, by the and, end of and, and 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 also our our female, just uh, I didn't mention that, but our female drivers are actually trained nannies, Ooh. so you can trust them with children as well. Yes, yes. So you got yeah, a that, full that, option service here. This is the full oh, package yeah. right there. You can leave oh, yeah. your kids. You can do whatever you want. I like that yeah, a lot. They can, they can actually pick up your kids from home and take them to school, bring them back. Uh, you know, you can trust them. That's fantastic. I, I, I love the business model. I love the idea of it. Thank you, Nasser. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Nasser Ashamsi, for joining us today and giving us a little bit of uh, an in-depth idea of all the recent accomplishments that are happening in the future world of automobiles right here in the heart of Sharjah. Coming, yeah. coming up, Future Talk is coming to an end, but we are going to be opening the airwaves for the only place to be at three. Yes, the halftime, the halftime show. show with Umar ad We You got two minutes until he comes on. And we are jumping on our spaceship, <laughs> our space shuttle, and going all the way to space. But you'll take catch us here, same time, same place tomorrow, right here only on Pulse 95. 95. If you liked this episode of Future Talk, drop a like and subscribe. Pulse 95. Be sure to follow us on Instagram for all our daily updates and top stories.